What is up guys? How's it going? Welcome back. Uh, feels good to get back into the groove of these videos. Today we have a, well something that kind of intimidates me a bit. We're going to be tearing down this transmission, um, because if you recall from the first episode of Disrespect CRX, um, it has a blown diff from the previous owner that I bought it from. Um, he, uh, it was a drag car. The, the transmission actually came out of uh, this car right here, the race car. Um, and I'm guessing he was hard launching it at the track without preloading suspension and start ripping things up. So we have a OEM replacement of a, uh, very lightly used O3 GSR diff. I'm not sure if this is going to fit yet, to be completely honest with you. Uh, a lot of the answers on online forums were kind of conflicting because you know the opinions are like assholes everybody's got one some guy says it fits some guy says you have to trim the case whatever um i'm okay with clearancing the case as long as it bolts up to the ring gear so this is where it bolts up to the ring gear uh, so as long as these threaded holes match up with the ring gear we should be okay now that one is a open diff, uh, which is opposed to the limited slip diff that is currently in the transmission. So we're losing a bit of performance, but um, I, I got it pretty cheap, 100 bucks from a guy I knew. Hooked him up with some parts, uh, he hooked me up with some parts. So, you know, comes around and goes around, guys, you know, be nice people. Because uh, you never know what you might get. But anyways, let's get started. Tear this boy down. I wanted to use my GoPro uh, chest mount today for this video because I think it'd actually be one of the videos that'd be good for, but guess what, I can't find it. Um, so, moving troubles. Anyways, I'll stop yabbing. Um, let's get this transmission torn down. First step, you need it like me and drain the transmission first. So you don't have to deal with this. And get these uh, bolts out of here. Did they get this mount off? And then, I believe we can start taking off the uh, 12 millimeter bolts around the case. All right, next up for teardown, um, it's gonna be simple. I'm just gonna take off the mount, uh, take off this cable speed sensor. Um, I think this is the reverse sensor in here, and then the uh, the, the shift selector lever, whatever you want to call it, and the throw up bearing. We're gonna take all that off, um, and then we're gonna flip this trans over, start taking off the bolts around the case. Now these two bolts right here, I believe, uh, they have a spring and ball, ball bearing sort of thing, um, sort of fastened inside of them. So when you take these two out, be extra careful to not lose or damage any of the extra hardware hiding behind these boys right here. And that's what they should look like after you're all done. Two, or I guess it's more than two, extremely important pieces of hardware. Do not lose. Since all this hardware is relatively um, pretty important, I won't go ahead and I won't put it on this orange towel so I can just keep track of them, not losing anything. All right, uh, now we're just going to go around the case with all these 12 millimeter bolts and that should separate to uh, this case from the other half of the case and let us see the internals. So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a one of my least favorite pieces of hardware hiding behind that boy right there. But first, let's go ahead, uh, get all these bolts taken off and then get the strands ready to be separated. These are all the same length, so you don't have to worry about keeping track of which one's longer, which one's shorter, because they're all the same. Uh, so now we'll get back to this. I got some crud and built up in mine, so I'm just gonna get that out real quick. So this is for a half inch drive. Just make sure you get a good, you know, get a good seat in that. Um, I'm gonna use a ratchet, you can use a brake bar if you want, it doesn't really matter, but we need to get this off so we can get down to the snap ring that's inside. All right, so right down there, those two uh, rectangular tabs that you see sticking out. Those need to be spread and then should be able to bump this case, be able to you know, get something down in here. 
Now, this would be much easier if you have the right tools. By the right tools, I mean a pair of uh, snap ring pliers that actually expands when you squeeze it. I do not have those, so um, I'm stuck with the uh, old fashioned. And see if I can use a mallet here to at least get this case um, unseated to the point of where I'd be able to pull it off. All right, I was able to get a bit of a uh, crack going in there. Be careful with tools like this because you really don't want to sc scratch it up like I did. It's on the outside, so it doesn't matter as much. You just really don't want to gouge the uh, the surface where the two are going to mate. All right, here it is in all its beauty. Um, so I missed one bolt, just one. It was on uh, the top of the case, if you're look, like standing in the engine bay and looking down at it, right across from where your, uh, usually your clutch cable bracket would be. There's a 14 millimeter. And it was connected in with the, uh, I wanna say this is a reverse idler gear. Not too sure, but I know that bolt was the one that was holding it up. Oh, now, um, I'm a little bit out of my element, not going to lie. So I know we need to take out this and this to get the whole gear set up and out. And I really don't want the gear set to fall apart because all these bearings are still good. Everything looks nice, nothing's chipped. I just have to get this diff out. So we'll start. Uh, taking those three 10 millimeter bolts out and these two 10 millimeter bolts out. Let's see if we can pull this whole gear set up as one. I'm gonna say that's a shift selector, I think. Um, as you can tell, these bolts are different. Well, one of them is different from the others. Um, if you get confused, all you have to look for are these shoulders here, or I guess the shoulders on the bolts. Those have been countersunk, whatever you want to call them, bored out. And this one has threads going all the way down. So that'll be where the shortest bolt goes, and your two longer bolts will go right there. If you ever get confused. Sorry about that with the, uh, I mean, this is a reverse idler gear, so I'm sure this has something to do with selecting reverse. Um, both bolts are the same size, so just make sure you don't lose them. Shouldn't be too hard to remember where they went. Now, as for the super super stressful part, uh, which is getting the gear stack out without messing anything up. Um, so, from what buddies have told me, it's just best to grab everything sort of right here in the other side and just lift it up as one whole unit. Um, these being the shift selectors, I believe. So we're gonna try to just grab them right here, manhandle the other side and just lift straight up. Cause you can't, I'm not gonna lie, this is like the most stressful part of this whole project. So uh, let's get to it. Too oily. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I think, uh, I think I'd call that a success. Uh, now this diff should be pretty easy to get out. I'm just assuming that it lifts out like that. <laughs> the bearing's still good, but you can see uh, see some of the um, the uh, I'm guessing there's some in there too. The guts of what used to be a really good differential. So um, yeah, I mean look at that versus that. Obviously, something wrong there. Well, now, uh, I'm guessing this bearing should just, shouldn't have to knock it out. I should just be able to pull it, but I might have to hit it with a hammer from the other side or a mallet. Um, so, both of these bearings are good, but I don't want to try to pull that one off and damage it. Whereas I could probably just knock this one out, save it, and then have a spare good bearing. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. We're going to put this to the side real quick. I'm going to knock out that bearing, and then we're going to look at the ring gear. I should probably do that first. Look at that ring gear. Hopefully it lines up. Bad news, guys.
They do not line up, only just slightly. And uh, the body of the diff right here and right here, you'd have to grind down to um, fit the ring gear over oh, because it's just a little too, too wide. So that really sucks. Um, I um damn. You know, there's a there's a reason why I named this series disrespected. <laughs> it's, it's for a good reason, cause this car, I I don't know what it is about it. It just it is unlucky. It is cursed. It is a cursed car. It may not be a Y forty nine, but it is cursed. So upon inspection of the blown diff, I saw this nice little pretty stamp on it. So, um, I, you know, I hate to do this, guys, but I guess it's just kind of the nature of the series. Disrespected. I'm gonna uh, disrespect you guys by leaving you hanging. Um, the car is already disrespecting me and my boy uh, because we're not able to get this differential in because uh, the ring gear is just ever so slightly different to the, the differential I have. It's, it's so, I mean, I, I don't really know what to do, guys. Um, I already contacted M Factory, and we'll see how much it's going to cost uh, to get it repaired. Uh, I think that's honestly our best option, because a DA Integra, a 90-93 to 93 Integra differential is going to cost more than getting an M Factory, a very, very, very good differential repaired. I think it can be repaired. Because it's really just a center section that's fucked up. Because, I mean, the other side's perfect. Nothing wrong with this. And I'm pretty sure the buckling that was happening when I had the car was from all of this getting binded and caught up. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll send it. Maybe we'll get it repaired. Maybe we'll get a new one. I don't know, but tune in next time to find out.